When you get out there in the world, all things being equal, they're going to hire somebody. And if you're as mediocre as everybody else, well, you know, why would, you know, it, you know, you want to stand out. And that's why this is important. But I'm not going to say all these things that you hear all the time. I'm going to try and talk to you about, you know, about you, literally you. Why is amazing important? Because it leads to success. And you know, we've, we define success in a million different ways. We define success as, you know, getting the perfect job. I want to be happy. You know, I want to fulfill my dreams. And that's success, right? And it's good. That's what we want. But really, who's, the question is, whose dreams are they? Are they your dreams? And you know, what is that path to happiness? How do you get there? You, you think you're happy, and maybe you are, and that's great. Live within that delusion. Because when you're 45 years old, and you look at your family, and you're Paul Gauguin, the painter, who said, screw this. He left his family of five kids and moved to Tahiti to, or free, to be a painter. So you can't be successful without taking care of you first. And what do I mean by taking care of you first? What I mean is, if you're, it's like an airplane. You know, if, for those of you that have flown before, you know, an oxygen mask, they say when the oxygen masks drop down and you know, we're, 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 the plane is decompressing, put yours on first, then put it on your child, because you have to take care of yourself. If you pass out or unconscious, you're not able to help anybody. And in a way, we pass out in life. We pass out. Our brains are sort of muddled gummed up and not really, really us. And it's not our fault. But you can change that. And the first part of it is being aware of this. To basically, you know, know thyself. So how? Well, you know, we've spent our lives pleasing other people, right? Your parents. Pleasing your bosses. Pleasing your better half. Pleasing your religion. Pleasing, pleasing, pleasing. And that's like kind of has made you, you don't not know it, and you may be completely ignoring it, but in ways it's made you a bit frustrated, a bit bored, and a bit uncertain about what you're doing, what your path should be and where you should go. And that's kind of normal, which is kind of sad, but it's pretty normal to feel that way. Basically, with all of this pleasing other people, it kind of makes you unamazing. It makes you like everyone else. And what amazing is, you're unique. Something you do stands out and makes you amazing uh, compared to everybody else. But what happens if you go against these people? You get punished. You are punished. You are told you're not a team player. You're an outcast. You're selfish because you're thinking of you. You're a sinner. And that's what you're told over and over, to not be you, because that's not good enough. We, you, you must please us. And I'm, I'm being extreme here, and it, but it can happen in very subtle, subliminal ways. What we wind up doing in life is to seek rewards that, that make us accepted by society. We start walking around going, hmm, I want to be accepted. I want approval. I want people to think I'm amazing. And I get there by doing all the expected things of me, by being completely, by, by completely playing the game. All right, so you know, what's wrong with that? You can lead a great life like that. You can totally be pretty boringly happy. You're, you'll, you'll lead that, you know, you'll lead that life. But, but the problem is, the reason, part of the reason that you're happy is because you don't know what you're missing because you've never really explored you. I've spent my life, and I'm still spending my life, trying to figure out where I belong, who I am, and what makes me happy. Like the oxygen mask, if you take care of yourself first, other people around you will, will be taken care of. You'll be much more suitable for really taking care of people. Like, like counseling your children. Forget your stupid careers, which are not stupid at all, by the way. What about your family, your kids? 
What if you're a yes person at work and no one really knows who you are? Are you helping those kids? Are they respecting you? What message are you sending those kids? You owe it to your future kids to just take care of you first so that you're going to be strong for them and really give them something that they can cling to because kids cling to you. They really do. So in a way, we become sort of like, our lives become like McDonald's employees. <laughs> we spend our lives going, yes, uh, sure, and how would you like that? Would you like, you know, uh, you know, I'd like some fries with that. Oh, would you like ketchup? Does that please you? I give you ketchup. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Right away. And that becomes kind of how we live our lives, like McDonald's employees. And that's, that's no fun, let me tell you. And I've been there. And we become comfortable and maybe even kind of successful, maybe even m really successful. But again, whose success is it? You know, is it your success? So yeah, you become really comfortable. But let me tell you, you also become unamazing. You offer little value, really, to anybody. If it's not really you doing the valuing, the, you know, the, the doing, if it's just this muddled mixture of all these different people's, you know, expectations from you, well, you're not offering the value. And you be, we become these sort of like, we become, we lead a zombie life, kind of. You may not think so. But there can be that little nookie at the back of your head that says, not nookie, noodling at the back <laughs> of your head that says, something isn't right.